Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're back in the shop working on our Invest Arms flintlock hawking kit from muzzleloaders.com. I'd like to thank them for giving me a discount on the kit that we're using in the video here today. Uh, last time you saw, we finished up the dry fitting process, got all of the hardware attached to the barrel and fit nicely, nice and snug, no gaps or anything, which I'm really pleased about. Now what we get to do is uh, what I think of as kind of the fun part. We get to start shaping and really making this muzzleloader come to life. We have a lot of excess wood uh, really all over the stock, um, around all of the inlets, and now it's up to us to clean up that extra wood and get a nice, sleek looking Hawken muzzleloader out of this. It's going to be pretty basic. We're going to start off by working with our rough and coarse files and rasps, and then getting down into some of the finer details uh, as we get more comfortable with it and uh, a little closer to how we want the muzzleloader to look in the end, uh, we'll start using some of our sandpaper and work from rough to fine, just like we do with our files here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let's get into it. To prepare to work on this end of the stock, I've clamped around the lock mortise and I have the barrel resting uh, on my, uh, really my just barrel or stock support on the bench. And I've got my rough rasp here to start. Now this face here uh, on, our, on our stock is pretty rough um, and we have a lot to take away when you look at the, uh, the butt plate and the toe plate here. Uh, it's about an eighth of an inch or so uh, of wood around here. So there's a lot of slimming up to do. So I'm going to be starting out with my large rasp here and uh, just kind of getting a lot of this excess wood removed. Um, and I'm just going to be slowly checking as I'm doing this just to make sure I'm not getting too out in the weeds. I think really what I want to start looking at is making sure that the level of wood that we have up here, I want that to start matching back here some more, getting rid of kind of this swell here. Um, so we have a nice continuous plane around here. As I do this, you might uh, be inclined to try to rasp or file like this perpendicular to the stock, but it's important that you either work in line with the stock or work at a slight angle here. You want as much surface contact between the stock and the file as you can get. Uh, when you start working like this, you run a risk of having a lot of waves and wobbles and knobs um, in your stock. Now, if we, <laughs> there are ways to hide that maybe, but it's best to not even do it in the first place. So we want this to, when this is done, we want a nice even finish across this wood. We don't want to see ripples or waves in it that aren't the grain. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of grain showing, I think. Um, when we totally finish this out, but we don't want any man-made, really obvious, nasty grain in there. You know, notice as I'm doing that too, just a, another little kind of sh quick tip for you. Um, when we're doing a large area like this, and we'll, you'll see this again on the forestock as well, we want to make sure we're trying to do a full stroke with that file, coming all the way back to the end and making sure we're going as far up as we can there. So we have a nice, even stroke with that file. It's going to help us keep a nice even finish as we're removing this wood. You don't want to get bogged down like here at the butt plate and just work this area because we know it's high. Uh, just right now this whole thing is high. I just want to take it all down at an even pace. And there you can start to kind of see the, the surface that we've worked here versus the, versus the coarseness uh, as it comes up here. Which isn't, you know, a knock on the, on the stock finish as you get it. Uh, you know, it's a kit. You'll start to see a difference pretty quick. Here you can see an example of wood that I've been able to work. And here, these darker spots are wood or sections of wood that we haven't had a chance to get down to yet. So as we work this whole surface, we'll bring the entire level down to be able to match this and then ultimately get rid of those color differences as we work our way down to matching our butt and toe plate here. In the tools video, there are a lot of comments about having a file card. Um, you'll notice as I'm working, I'll tap the file on the bench like that a little bit. And that loosens up a lot of the debris that kind of gets lodged 
into your file like you can see there. But something else you can do, there's a tool designed uh, to clean all this stuff out and that's going to be your file card. It's going to be a deal like this. Some stiff bristles on one side, maybe some wire brush on the other. And you just run it across here, clean your file out. It's a tool that, you know, it's, it's pretty handy to have. You don't necessarily need it, but I think it helps a lot when uh, you're working on something like this. You got a lot of filing to do here. So as I'm working this, I'll go through and kind of rub my hand across this top plane here um, after every few strokes, just to make sure I don't have any weird ridges or anything in there. So right now, I'm not sure if you can see it. It's hard to see here in person, but I have a little bit of a ridge kind of running right along here, um, which kind of represents the balance between kind of how I've been working here and how I've been working up here. So I want to go through just like so, and kind of go in and balance that line out. Again, trying to keep my file or my rasp as in contact with the stock as I can. I know it, you know, as you can tell, it's curved, you know, but we just want to be cognizant of that as we're working on this. So we don't get any weird wavy patterns through here physically. Now, we don't mind if there's some uh, grain that shows, you know, a little bit of curl in the stock that kind of looks like a wave going through there, but we don't want any physical waves in here. See, I switched over to a pretty rough rasp that you can see here. Really aggressive. It's uh, more apparent here on the half round side. To, just to go through, this is an old Nicholson rasp made in the USA. To go through and really get a lot of this wood out of here, I'm probably three quarters of the way through now back here around our butt and our toe plate um, and finally making some progress, I think. Uh, I'll switch back over to my rough uh, file here soon enough and kind of finish out here along these plates and kind of along our cheek rest here as we make our way up here to our wrist. So we've had our first, um, I guess, marks of progress, literally. So you can see here, here, and a little bit down here now, we've had our first marks of, of progress, I think, on filing this stock down. Um, our file has scraped our butt plate in those little areas there, which is good. That shows us that we're right on par with where we need to be there. So I'm kind of marking those areas with my pencil here to know to stay away from them and really kind of focus more on uh, I think some of the area up here as well as down here as we go into the rest of the butt plate and the trigger plate, or the, not the trigger plate, the butt plate and the toe plate down here. Uh, this area is a little tricky because there's not a lot of surface area for us to balance our file on, so I'm going to continue to be careful and really try to get the rest of this rear of the stock ready to go here because the rest of it's looking pretty good. I've gotten to the point here now where I have nice contact with my plates, both my butt and my toe plate here, all the way around on this face. I've been working on this uh, just this morning, probably about an hour and a half now, uh, to get to this point. So it took a little bit of time, uh, but I'm really pleased kind of looking at it all over how it went for us. Really, once you get, I don't know, probably the first half done, uh, it starts to really speed up a little bit. Here on top of the butt plate, you can see there just a little bit, kind of the difference there. This is the part of the side that we've worked, and down here you can see some of that extra wood still hanging out. Um, so what I'll do next is I'll flip this over so we start working on the side plate side before I start working on kind of uh, the top and bottom here. I'll kind of work on the top as I'm working that other side. I kind of had the inclination to start working on the bottom uh, face here, but I want to make sure that we get both of the sides done first. They're kind of the major parts of this. I want them to both be even before I start uh, flattening this out and, and lining this up with the rest of the stock. So this side's going to act a little bit, um, or a lot really, like the other side, except we have our cheek rest in here, which really kind of changes up the entire shape of this. Um, but we're going to treat it in many regards the same way. I'm going to come in here with my 
really rough rasp here with the toe and the butt plate and work around them and kind of work right up to where this starts to swell up for that rest. Um, I'm going to just leave that as it sits until we get this back here kind of evened out. And then we're going to come in with our half round rasp around and establish more of this cheek rest, both on the underside and then coming up around the back here. When we look at a lot of these traditional Hawkins, we have a nice soft curve coming into the cheek rest here from the top and a nice hard defining line. And that uh, kind of design element really goes back into late 1700s and, and early 1800s, really before the Hawkins and just kind of evolves along with them. Um, so like I said, first, we're going to come in here from the rear, kind of the underside here, then work our way back, establish this cheek rest with our half round and, uh, and start refining uh, more as we go from there. So now I'm going to take this round, this fully round rasp here and go around the backside and kind of the underside of our cheek rest here and kind of clean this up. You saw I used kind of a half round rasp to help get around some of these areas here um, so that I could finish out the toe plate and the top or the front end of our butt plate here. But now we have this kind of this nasty looking gnarly um, edge here and we want to clean that up and make this a little bit more of a, you know, as we come across the cheek rest, we want that to drop down and then kind of swoop back into the rest of the stock. So this isn't particularly easy. Um, we want to, we're kind of freehanding all of this, the definition here, and I don't want to lose that definition. I want to establish that definition. So as I'm working this, I'm being really careful to make sure my file doesn't get wonky. I want this to kind of be a nice, similar line all the way around. So as I'm working to establish that, you'll see I have a finger out here to support the front end of my rasp. And it kind of works on my finger a little bit, but nothing, um, you know, nothing damaging. And as I do that, I'm able to keep that rasp kind of in a similar line and establish that cut so that I can work on bringing that around without getting into the rest of the stock down here. And this helps establish that swoop that I was talking about where our cheek weld comes down and goes into the rest of our stock. Traditionally on these Hawkins, we have this cheek rest coming up to a nice fine point. Um, it's hard to explain because it's kind of three dimensional, but this cheek rest kind of comes in at, at an angle and we have a nice slight angle as this curve returns all the way around. And I have quite a bit of extra wood that you can see um, here at the top of our, of our cheek rest there. You can see that line there and that line there. Uh, indicating that. So I'm kind of bringing this around with this small round rasp and as I do that I'm trying to be careful to not go in too deep. We don't want to undercut this cheek rest but we do want to establish it and as I make these strokes I'm bringing the rasp as far around as I can to blend in this line with the rest of this curve. And that's not looking too bad for me, really. Have a little bit more of that pronounced cheek piece that we want. And so we can come in now, kind of in this direction, towards the muzzle and clean up that blend. So we have that pronounced line that we want. And we can further work and blend these lines here.
And a lot of this com comes down to what you want out of your kit. Um, I like to try to think of these as a little bit of an artistic opportunity here. So I'm going to, as I bring this curve around, I'm not just going to terminate it here at the base of our cheek rest. I'm going to let this run up here. We have a little bit of that in the machine stock. And really I'm going to let this curve run and fade out until we get up to the front part of the wrist or the rear part of the wrist, which is the front of the cheek piece, where we can let that blend out. So I'm just going to keep with this large half or this large round rasp, just gently, again, trying to keep as much contact as possible, bringing that curve around. And this is going to inform how I shape the base of the stock well, here. We're going to need to bring this up into the cheek piece and it's going to inform how we form the cheek piece itself. So I want to make sure I'm doing this in line just so we have nice uh, nice lines and nice design around this kit. As I'm doing this you'll notice that my rasp is knocking up against my side plate side over here. So that's kind of informing my decisions on how to do this and it's always best I think to kind of try to work with whatever you're working on and not force something. So what I'm doing is I'm just using that and saying okay it's best for me to stick with the front half of this rasp which is fine because we get rather thick back here. So I don't damage up here and I'm just working that front half of that rasp and that naturally is going to start blending that line out for me as we get up here where we get away from any of that wood. And you can kind of see it here where we, you have a really pronounced shadow line here and then up here it's nearly non-existent. And with other files and things we'll work that in more and, and exaggerate that a little bit for the sake of the design. But it's nice that um, it does that kind of naturally, and I think it's good to listen to that when you can. And I'm going to be a little more aggressive here in taking that cheek piece up at this angle. I want that cheek piece line to start lining up kind of with the breech of our rifle up there. Just give us a nice swoop as we go up through there. Not too much. We don't want to, you know, totally deform that rest, but we do want it to want it to have a nice look, I think. And as you're doing this, it's important to come back and adjust your curve some. Because you don't want to get totally out of whack with that. You don't want any flat spots. And I could too come in from this side. And really work to establish that front end. Very aggressively. But then I'm going to want to come back here and blend those two kind of sessions together a little bit with that curve. And this is going to amplify, this this line here is going to amplify quite a bit because we have a lot of material to remove here. So it's going to take a lot of filing in here um, to get that right for us. As I'm working this cheek piece, I'm just using this half round rasp. Um, you could use a file as well, but because I have so much wood to get rid of here, um, this rasp is nice and aggressive in cleaning this out for us. Um, I'm starting up here, kind of establishing this upper line and making sure that we have it continue where we want it to, and then coming down here to the toe of the stock and working really from the toe up to that curve with my rasp, really at a in parallel with the stock as far as um, you know this rotational axis goes. So that curve is riding along the stock up to the part where we have curved 
or cut out here establishing that shadow and that helps us exemplify that that shadow and that line that we want coming up uh, from this direction without barking or getting into that curve uh, as much as we could it's hard to see um, but you can start to feel especially and, and when you're doing one of these kits as much as it is about the look um, you're going to learn how to feel a lot of this stuff too so as i'm coming around you know this area of the stock that we've already worked and, and the kind of blending point that we're working on here between the stock and the cheek rest um, i can feel that it's it's pretty even especially as we come through here we have a nice swoop coming down connecting with the toe of the stock but as i come up here i can really feel that first rasp line that we made and you can kind of see we have a line right here with that where our rasp was working and i can feel that line too and that tells me as i'm feeling this stock that we still need to work up here now that might seem kind of obvious um, because we we really haven't worked this area up here any at all but it's important as you're working this stuff to feel across these planes because this dry wood starts to all look the same as we're working it and your your fingers and your you know as you feel that it's going to tell you a lot more i think than you can see now i don't necessarily want to just stay on this cheek piece the whole time uh, so i'm going to bring my rasp up around and we're going to start working on this wrist a little bit and then we'll come back through and kind of do a finishing pass on all of this um, and then you know rotate to the, the the toe and the and the crest here of our stock shifting our focus a little bit here I'm going to come up around and take care of the toe um, face of our stock here. As I'm working around the cheek rest, which you can see is here on the right hand side now, I don't want to do a whole lot more here on establishing this face. I can see kind of looking down at that we have a little bit of a bulge there. But I want to have this face defined before I go into any final cutting here, just so that we keep this all symmetrical and we keep it all in the right design sense now you could go through and finish this if you wanted to um, this is really just how i'm thinking about it trying to bring this all together as an ensemble as much as we can which might sound silly for you know for some of us out there uh, you know looking at one of the more inexpensive kits out there but really for a lot of people this is their first and maybe their last or their their pride and joy muzzleloader and there's no reason to not uh, to not treat it that way. So I, I hope you've enjoyed the, the process so far and, and kind of my thoughts on on these muzzleloader kits. So I'm treating this just like the rest of our stock that we talked about. It's really raining a lot. Where I'm trying to keep as much of this rasp in contact with the stock at all times. As these kits come to you, these sides are a little bit, uh, I have a little bit of like a 45 degree angle there. And that's not something that I want on this bottom face. I want this bottom face to be as square as our toe plate here, all the way up. That gives us a nice hard, nice, you know, just design contrast again from the rest of the curves of the piece. You'll notice I'm kind of coming up here and stopping. As we get up into the wrist, we want to make sure that we have some nice curves and things. So as I get up here to probably about halfway through this trigger guard inlet here, I'm going to work on blending that a little bit later. But you'll see I have a, a hand out here at the front of my rasp and I have a hand back here. Uh, really the force, this my right hand being the force behind the rasp and this being kind of my guide. And I could, if I wanted to, bring my fingers up here to touching the stock to give me a little more stability there. Now I'm using a rasp at this point because I have a lot of wood to remove. 
But as I get closer, where I don't want this rasp to contact my toe plate, I will switch over to a file. Because that file can ride the can ride that metal. Now looking down it, I'm coming to the base of the rifle and looking down. I have an angle going, which is common for me, uh, just inexperience really. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm not leaning too heavy on one side of the rasp like I have been doing. Which isn't a big deal, um, you know, I don't like doing it just creates more work but as long as I leave enough wood and check often like we've been talking about it's not a problem to get that leveled out and come in with your file and and make it one nice even face so I'm checking the axis in line with the kit and then I'm going to come over to the side as well over here and check it too to see how straight it is now and I can verify that by bringing in a ruler and setting it on the stock like this so ideally when this is complete we want the ruler to be in contact with the toe plate and the stock at the same angle so right now we have a little bit of a wobble there so we're not quite where we want to be so I've marked the area here on my toe where I have um, that kind of bump that's leading into all of this being out of the the same axis or the, or the same level um, which makes sense when I'm using my rasp I want to be cautious about this toe plate so I've biased towards the front end uh, of where we were working so I'm gonna get out a, a kind of a, a medium coarseness file we're going to come in right here and see if we can clean up just this area here we have that pencil mark and you can see here when i was talking about working to finish up underneath our cheek rest here we want all of this face right here to be in line and because we haven't removed enough wood over here on this side we have a bit of a bulge there you can see right in there i'll just mark that with my pencil maybe that'll help you see it better from there to about there we have a nice swoop coming across there we want that to be a nice straight line so that there is material we're going to remove and really up into here that's material we're going to remove to get a nice clean look on this stock so i'm trying to compensate for that bias again you can see i have a little bit of pencil mark left over here which means and all the pencil over here is gone which means i'm trying to correct that early bias that i had and i'm tilting the file more to this side, more to the right than I am to the left to make up for that early mistake. Again, not a super big deal. It's not going to ruin the it's not going to ruin the kit if you don't um, if everything's not perfectly level. It's up to you as you're building it. But you'll notice we've removed enough wood here now that we have a nice crisp line here on this left hand side. We don't have that 45 degree angle break any longer. <laughs> As you get closer here, you can see I've just put my file in line with the stock. To help us get, I mean, when I do this, as long as I have pressure here on the front end with my thumb, this is going to be level with the stock. There's just not really a way that it can get, uh, I don't think at least, out of, out of plumb with the stock. And having this nice large file like this means that I can come in there and really hit this whole plane without a whole lot of effort and keep it all true. So I'm really dedicating my force now. You can see I'm working on my toe plate there a little bit, but working on trying to get these two tails that come into our toe plate, get those flush with the toe plate. You'll notice that I'm taking some off of our toe plate there with this file. It's not something I'm, I'm worried about. We're going to polish that piece anyway. And I care a lot more about a nice, smooth transition from metal to wood. So 
It's not looking too bad. Now I'm going to come in here where we marked uh, under our cheek piece there because you can see from the top down, you can see this bulge here. And we want this whole face to be very even as it goes through. So we don't have near the bulge on, uh, on our left hand side as we do on our right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in just this flat file here. I'm going to clean it out so it's a little more effective there. And if you're worried about um, your if you're worried about your cheek piece here, you can use a, a safe a safe sided um, file and, and and run your safe side up against that. I'm not too concerned about that right at the moment. Um, I'm just going to come in here with this file and just kind of run across here, trying to establish and and get rid of that bulge there. That's tricky, coming in there. It might be better, really, to come in there with a half round. Yeah, it is. So, what I did there was I made a mistake. I, I made the wrong call on the tool. But when the tool's not working, it's best to stop reevaluate and try to find a tool that you think is going to work. So what I went to, what I shifted to, was this half round rasp. And this half round rasp you could use a, a half round file all the same. Uh, but what it does and what it allows me to do here is I can come in almost parallel with the stock like this. Keeping all of my curve down here where my curve is on the stock matching what I want this shape to be while keeping a nice straight hard line here kind of on this upper face there for the stock. So I'm, I'm, I guess what I, what I mean to say is you want to find a tool that fits the area that you're working on so that you're not fighting anything. So you, you saw there my large flat file was jumping up and I was starting to ding this line that I want to keep and establish. Um, so when you have something like that going on, switch your tool, you know, step back, think about it. And, and try to find something that works a little better. So we're going to keep working this. We have a fair amount of bulge left here to see if we can get this finished up. And I'm just eyeballing this. You know, you could measure or mic this. But when I'm doing a lot of this stuff, I just it's nice to kind of just be hands-on about it. So I'm marking area where I'm seeing uh, a bulge still present really between our toe plate and up here against our trigger guard inlet where we haven't done a whole lot of work. Just siding down that like we were when we were establishing this face on the stock. And that kind of lines up with how my handle is interfering uh, with my toe plate here. So I'm gonna switch to a different tool. Grabbing another little handleless half round rasp. Um, these are nice because I'm dealing with my vise on one side and uh, my toe plate on the other and I don't want to I don't really want to interact with either of those because <laughs> they can mess up my my strokes and things so my goal right now bring you in some is I'm, I'm going after this face here. So we dealt with this face and we have this the cheek piece face kind of established. Um, but right now as as we are working and bringing this face together we now have quite a bit of uh, of kind of just a rough valley. So this goes as it comes around we kind of have some bumps and some waves in there as we go up to our cheek piece. It's not that bad. Um, that's just an exaggeration there, but um, we want to come in and clean that out so that we have a nice even curve up into that cheek piece. And it's not really even like that. You know, it's kind of about half of that, but that, <laughs> that might uh, hinder you more than it helps you there. But we're going after this face here where I've marked even this out. I'm using this half round rasp to go in there and establish this swoop. 
You'll notice I'm not just running the rasp straight up and down this curve because it, it's not wide. It's, it's too wide for my rasp. But what I'm doing is I'm kind of starting up here against this, this line here and I'm doing a diagonal stroke till I get off the wood there. And by doing that, I'm getting the maximum contact with my rasp on the wood for each stroke. And that's helping me keep from wibble wobbling all the way around um, the rest, or, yeah, wibble wobbling really around the stock. And again, I'm using my fingers to check all of this here. We can come in here and make this a little more aggressive if we want. But we're just going to continue those strokes. And this doesn't have to be perfect in here. You'll even notice on a lot of original muzzle loaders, um, really depending on the maker, but a lot of this under the cheek piece was really left pretty rough. Um, there was there was just simple carving lines cut in there to establish, and it was left that way. Um, there may have been some carving underneath there on you know on some of the fancier pieces that we've all seen, um, but some more of this this simple pieces they just left that. Uh, it's that'd be much. I'm talking about much earlier pieces than than uh, this Hawken would be represented in. But uh, it's something to take into account when you're doing some of your some of your research. And when it comes to these, I, I've been putting some Hawken resources in the in the description of each video for you to check out. Um, but Bob Woodfill's book on Hawkins, I think it's Hawken. The Hawk and Rifle from 1817 to 1870, if I recall right, were the years there. Really interesting book and on a um, really large swath of Hawk in history. Um, we're going to pull it out here in the next few videos as we talk about more work on this piece. So I'm going to bring out just a little bit of a larger rasp. To... At this point I've got up to about here uh, feeling pretty good. Let me mark on my pencil there so you guys can kind of see that. Uh, I have a nice really balanced curve as we go around here. It's not, I don't have the, a hard line in here like I'm hoping to get. Um, as we work on this, but I'm getting there. And I guess where I'm going with this is I want to get all of this in the same ballpark before I move on. I don't want to like finish the area back here and then move up here and take it to completion. When I'm working on a section like this, I want to take it all to a completion point gradually at the same pace. So I've, I've worked back here some, I want to make sure I get this front area finished up before I do a whole lot more back here. I don't want to throw myself off as I'm working on this. And I'm going to refer to my Hawken book uh, on this kind of area up here before I really do much more with that. Um, I'm not really sure how those terminate um, and I don't want to remove too much wood before I figure that out. So I'm going to focus on coming in back here and uh, I've got a couple points here that I can feel that need just a little bit of work. I really need a smaller tool. You'll find as you're working that, uh, and it seems kind of obvious I suppose, but sometimes it um, still feels like new information to me as I'm working, but when you get into a mode like this and you're working on something, you'll often want to stick with the same tool, um, just out of habit. You've got it in your hand and you feel like it's doing a good enough job, but it's really good to switch tools, like I have here, switching to this small ra round rasp. 
um, and you'll go from you'll go from large to small and I, I really like that process because the large tool you can really hog out a lot of material but then with your smaller tool you can really blend in these areas so right now I'm kind of working this area back in here where I've worked this side of the stock and I've worked up here quite a bit and I'm just kind of coming in here just gently with this small rasp and just cleaning this up Now it's not perfect because we are using this rasp, but it's getting us where we need to be. And I, when I say it's not perfect because we're using this rasp, I just mean that this rasp is a coarse rasp and it's not giving us a finished appearance on our wood. But it's not meant to. We'll come in with our files and our sandpaper and we'll, we'll get that finished up and I, I'm pretty pleased with with where we're at here um, at this stage like I said we, I need to do some research and uh, and figure out the front of our cheek piece here and make sure we get that established I think we've gotten the underside established pretty well here I'm going to show you what that looks like from the top so you can see it there, we'll bring you around. It's important to look at this stuff from multiple angles because the people, um, <laughs> when you show people your work, they're gonna look at it from these multiple angles. Kind of bring this in just a little bit here. Again, we aren't done by any means um, with this cheek piece. We're gonna be working on this quite a bit as we move forward. A lot of finishing to do here and I'm just kind of blending a little bit of this up here and looking at this from the top you can see a little bit uh, of, a, of a difference so get my pencil out back here looking at the camera there you see a much thinner dark line coming around basically from here to here okay up here though you see a much wider dark line don't you kind of between this face and this face here. So what that is, is our vertical face now underneath this cheek piece isn't quite vertical. Uh, it's going off at an angle towards the, the toe of our, of our stock here. Not a big deal, like I said, this is the face that we've been working on and it's not finished uh, because I, I wanna figure out what we're doing up here, but it's important to rotate your stock around and rotate your piece around so you're thinking about and looking for areas like that. I think ideally, in my mind, we want this thin dark line to be the same all the way around as we come up to here. So we're going to come in some more with our rasps and our files and get from here to here after we do some research, get this so this shadow line is the same all the way across. That's where we're at. So we're gonna keep plugging away here. I'm going to move, just because I'm in the shop right now, I'm gonna move up to a, a bit of the wrist and the upper face of the stock here. And uh, we'll hit the books and I'll uh, bring those back in here and we can take a look at our cheek rest. As we work on this kit, I'm getting to the point where I want some historic reference, if nothing else, to guide my process and the decisions I'm making on the kit. So to do that, I've opened up here to page 99 to a Gammer made Hawken in Bob Woodfield's The Hawken Rifle, 1817-1870. This being a Gammer Hawken kit, I'm led to believe that they're inspired with the kit by the Gammer made Hawkins, um, which Gammer took over the Hawken shop um, towards the 1860s or so. It says right here, he bought the Hawken shop in 1860. So there we go. Here's a picture of him in 1910. So we have a couple different views and photos of these Hawkins, as well as um, details on their sites and things um, to give us a little bit of an idea of what these, what these rifles were. Obviously our kit is a, a, a flintlock, so we can't really use you know, the, the drum and the nipple design that we have here. But a lot of this other stuff, especially the shaping around the lock mortise, um, we can take special note of. I'm looking for some details of the wrist 
So here's a, a nice detail of our cheek piece. And you'll notice we have a nice stepped line there all the way around with a nice curve cut into, you know, kind of undercut our cheek piece there. That might be something for us to take note of uh, as we finish and, and, uh, and clean up our cheek piece there. So I'm going to set this book over here to the side just momentarily and get my apron on. It's handy if you have a spot on your workbench or some reference material next to where you're working. So I have this book, uh, so I have this book stationed, I mean, less than a foot from where I'm working here so that I can continually reference as I'm working. And what I want to do is take a look at that cheek rest. Um, and we have quite a bit of wood um, still up in this area here. And it looks like what we have going on is a much more dramatic curve. Bring you in here so you can see what we're doing. Much more dramatic curve as we come up, as we come up to our little notch here. And this notch is much more um, much more severe than the kit itself indicates. So we have a little bit of a, a step that we can do there, which won't take long with our with our rasps and things. But we want that our cheek piece to kind of come up and blend into the wrist. And then from here, you know, I don't know that we're gonna do that checkering there. We might. Don't get uh, too excited there though, folks. The rest of this I'm feeling pretty good about. We're going to want to remove a lot of this kind of 45 degree angle that I have in here and really tighten that up um, to the rest of the cheek piece. As I'm doing this, I'll reference um, and, and establish lines across the material, across the image here. So if I hold my pencil pretty, I mean, pretty straight, I think, perpendicular to the page, we'll say, um, in line, as straight as I can, the tail end of our cheek piece really lines up with where this blends out. And we kind of have a, a line there guiding where that swoop of that cheek piece goes. So I can take my pencil or my ruler and check that on my kit here as well. And I can see that I'm pretty close there. Um, you know, not exact, but we're pretty close. And as I, I mean, this is all up to you on how you want to handle this kind of thing. This might be too much. This might be too much detail for you. You just want to get out and get hunting. But um, I'm looking here towards the front of our cheek piece. And really the line kind of disappears for our cheek piece. Um, so this line kind of connects up here in the wrist. And then back here that starts, this is really where that line kind of terminates, is, is back in here. Kind of where we have this swoop kind of connecting. So we're going to bring this removal of wood up into this triangle here. And let it fade up into the wrist. And that's going to get us a little bit closer to the shape that we want. Uh, and a little more accurate. Again, not going to be super accurate. You're not going to see this kit in the museum representing hawk and identification, uh, just because I'm simply not that skilled. But uh, we're going to get it a little closer for our own personal taste and go from there. Up here, working on the top of this face here, we have the crest of our stock coming in right there. I don't want to erode that any, if I can keep from it. So I'm trying to make sure to keep my rasps, my, my rasps and my files uh, away from that. If anything, we want to establish that just a little bit more as we're working. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as you're coming up here to the wrist area. So what I'm doing now is just removing wood, kind of rounding this out, not too much, uh, but we just want to get rid of some of these hard lines and get rid of the difference um, in, in face height between our wood and our tang there.
There you can see a little bit of the difference between the face that I've worked and the face that comes uh, as the kit comes. So we've brought all of this down to where we're starting to interact with our tang there. And we're going to bring this side around now to match. And I want to establish this before I come back in here and cut this out here on the top of our stock crest. So I get a lot of this geometry up here kind of finalized before or, or close to final before we start taking the rest of the stock into kind of its final paces here. So I'm just bringing my file. It's a pretty rough, broad, flat file. I'm letting it kind of bounce really off of, of, of our crest back here because we're going to remove and, and shape this a little bit more. So I'm not really too concerned with this. I'm, I'm really going to be back in here as far as protected wood goes. So the wood I'm going to remove just serves as a nice buffer for us. And again, I'm not I'm not too concerned about scratching or anything. My uh, my breach. I'm more in, personally more interested in um, in in making sure all of this stuff is in line and matches. I'm going to go through and, and sand and polish this stuff anyway. It might seem a little bit backwards, but that's how it's always been done, um, and it doesn't take too long to go back through and polish this stuff. <laughs> You can see I've, I've dinged up my, my tang screw just a hair. Um, I'm going to polish that up anyway and make sure it's colored the same as the rest of our hardware here. But to prevent any further damage, I'm just going to come in like this with my file and just work that area with a little less risk of, of bumping into our screw there. It's going to come around. I'm coming through and, and using my fingers here to feel around all of this. See how close we're getting. This is just a slow, patient back and forth. And we'll come through and final fit and finish this with some sandpaper. Um, and get some of this stuff cleaned up. We don't want to do a whole lot more, I don't think. Back here I've got a little bit of a bulge I can feel. Now that I have my book down here in the shop, I'm just going to continually reference that as I'm working. Again, that's an auxiliary, you know, kind of a, a addition to building a kit like this. Um, you can do yourself a lot of good by printing off some pictures. It's preferable to try to get pictures of the same Hawken uh, from different angles so that you're not mixing up eras or makers, um, depending on what you want. Now, if you want to have a, a Frankenhawken of, of, and I don't mean that in a... Uh, a demeaning way. Uh, Frankenhawken made up of, of actual Hawken and then Gemmer attributes and parts, you know, that's that's more than fine. You know, you, you got to do what you want to do and that's the great thing about muzzle loading is it offers everybody a nice canvas to work on and work from. So I've got my, my round rasp here. I'm going to clean it out and we're going to come in and establish a little bit of that cheek rasp. I can do this too with a half round rasp, that's what you have. Doing that, I just want to be careful that I'm not going beneath, I'm not going too deep, because I want a nice even line coming back from my tang through the wrist. And if I go too deep, I'm going to have a divot there, and I don't want that. So I'm just going to come in. Work my file a little bit. You know, I kind of think of file work a lot like sculpting. You know, if you remember your high school art class, it's kind of like clay, except you can't add anything back. So I'm just being gentle. Taking a few strokes, you can tell, and I'm checking with my finger, just seeing how we're doing. I'm not going to touch this side a whole lot. I'm going to, you know, wake up with a, a fresh mind and come through and, and tackle that. So what I'm doing now is kind of bringing around to our, our right hand side here. Now that I've established this here a little bit, I'm going to come in and, and round this out some 
with my other file. I've got a nice little half round guy here. I'm using that half round so I can kind of come in and work that swoop some that we've been working on. Bring you in here a little bit more. So I'm coming in from the side there because overall I want this, I'm going to kind of establish the center line there. Just like the kit came, I want this to come with a rounded nose here to the front. Really, I suppose it's about back here. So I want to remove wood on the side and really I can come back in here with this guy. Like so. And this is going to help establish kind of a, a nice detail line coming back from the wrist into our, into our stock. Got some ridges in there. From our files, we're just going to come in and continually work that. that a little bit closer to what we want. Then we can come in and do kind of a similar thing on this side. Again, always keeping our file in as much contact as we can with the stock. And checking frequently as we're, as we're filing. I'm doing this one to get rid of a lot of that blockiness that we have. Just cleaning it up. We're going to get to a point here where it's going to be less and less noticeable what work we're doing. But it's going to be that detail work that helps us really polish off this kit. Okay. By this point, all the students out there paying attention uh, will know that I have not treated the rest of our crest here. And we need to do that. So I'm going to choke this up a little bit in the vise. I want to do this really before I do a whole lot more up here. I want to make sure that the rest of this crest um, is what we want it to be and is at the level that we need it to be. Um, so we can think about finalizing some of this pretty coarse flat file here We may switch to the rasp, but because we're dealing with this butt plate back here uh, Might just stick with the file so we know we're not ruining anything and Just like with everything else it's a lot of repetition we're talking about with this kit, but um, By the time you do all these areas and these parts you should you know have a, a couple new skills in your own little mental toolbox on doing this stuff. And so we're treating this just like everything else. Just doing a light filing till we start interacting with our hardware back here, this time just being our butt plate. Keeping as much contact with the file and the stock as we can. So we have a nice even mating between our wood and our metal. So because I'm right handed, I'm having a little difficulty getting over here. Shifting position. So I'm thinking that looks pretty good, at least to me. We have interaction all the way around of our butt plate here, which means we're nice and close. I'm just going to take a pause here, survey what we've done, and think about my next move. I think it's important as you're working on something like this to pick it up in your hands and and move it around a lot see it in the three dimensions that it exists in as cheesy as that sounds and feel the areas that maybe you haven't been interacting with so i have a bit of a flat over here that i can feel and i'm just going to mark a line here and here so that i'm filing oh, my stroke will really start kind of back here and go to up here but just filing that flat out there as i look at this from top down you can see right here i have a little bit of a bump so i'm going to circle that bump we're going to smooth that out some. 
I want this to have a nice even flow back into here. Um, overall, for as rough as we hacked this out here, I'm, I'm pleasantly pleased um, with that. I think we can take this just a little bit deeper looking at this from the top down. I don't want to make it too thin here in the wrist. The wrist is a real weak point on, on any muzzle loader, really. But we want to make sure that we're, we're being cautious about that and balancing the quality of the, of the kit with the, with the look that we want in it. So we're going to remove a little bit of wood there. And then as I'm looking around here, I want to flesh this out, this area here. We really only need this area here of our lock mortise to be present. Um, so I want to bring this curve around. really want to round out the entirety of this down here, get rid of these corners, and begin to blend this area into the rest of the kit. To do that, as we start to work around down here, we'll put our trigger plate in so that we are mating our hardware to our wood, just like we have on the rest of the kit. So we're making our way forward. It's, it's been a little slow, but um, I, I think that if you want to build a nice kit, you don't want to rush it, but it's really up to you. You know, you can, you can take or leave anything that I talk about in these videos. I encourage you to fast forward to the parts that you want um, to learn about and, and that you care about because ultimately I'm not building your muzzleloader, I'm building my muzzleloader. And that's the, I think that's a notion that you should hold on to as you build your kit. You'll get a lot of, you'll get a lot of ideas and things from people, perhaps unwarranted, but um, it's good to, to build the muzzleloader that you want.